Hello horror fans, Dr. Udru here with a double feature. Today I'll be looking at 1932's Dr. X and 1933's Mystery of the Wax Museum, both directed by Michael Curtiz and both starring Lionel Atwill and original scream queen Fay Ray. Now you'd expect movies from the early 30s to be in black and white, right? Well, you'd be wrong, and I'll never forget my surprise when I popped in my DVD copy of Dr. X back in the day and was greeted by the eerie two-hue spectrum of early color. Both of these films were shot in two-strip technicolor, a process by which a beam splitter exposed duplicate black and white frames, one through a red filter and another through a green filter. The two frames were then glued together and each side dyed their corresponding hue, creating a color picture. Horror fans will be most familiar with two-strip technicolor from the mass ball sequence in 1925's Phantom of the Opera but the first horror picture to be entirely filmed in this process was Dr. X in 1932. Based on the stage play The Terror by Howard W. Comstock and Alan C. Miller, Dr. X follows titular character Dr. Jerry Xavier. And yes, it's pronounced Xavier, not Xavier. Shh, you wanna get sued? After examining a victim of the so-called Moon Killer, Xavier deduces she was both strangled and cannibalized. Furthermore, the police profile the perpetrator to be highly disfigured and to have used a scalpel found exclusively at Xavier's Medical Institute, making his four faculty members suspects. Dr. Duke has a contemptuous nature, yet is bound to a wheelchair. Dr. Wells's field of expertise is cannibalism, and yet he's missing an arm with which to strangle someone. Dr. Haynes once survived a shipwreck in which a colleague mysteriously disappeared, but is of sound mind. Dr. Rowitz also survived that very same shipwreck, studies the psychological effects of the moon, and has a disfiguring scar on his face, but also writes beautiful poetry? Well, I don't believe that Dr. Rowitz could commit a crime. Why, he's the author of several volumes of poetry. The police give Xavier 48 hours to capture the killer, but can he do so before they strike again? Outlook not so good. Filmed before the creation of the Motion Picture Production Code, the plot of Dr. X includes several taboo topics. In the words of author and experimental filmmaker Kenneth Anger, there is something for everyone in this picture. Cannibalism, dismemberment, rape, and necrophilia. Thanks, Ken. Couldn't have said it better myself. Due in part to its illicit content, the color version of Dr. X was shelved and thought lost for decades. A more widely circulated black and white version was believed to be the only surviving copy until a color print was found in the personal collection of studio head Jack Warner. In the meantime, audiences were given an in-name only sequel starring a miscast Humphrey Bogart in 1939. Inspired by the short story The Waxworks by Charles S. Belden, Mystery of the Wax Museum reunited the team of Atwill, Ray, and Curtiz the following year. Beginning in London in 1921, the film revolves around wax sculptor Ivan Igor. Now it's pronounced Igor. Due to the dwindling ticket sales of his wax museum, Igor's business partner elects to burn it down for insurance money, sparking the two men to fight. When Igor is knocked unconscious, he's left to burn along with his creations. Twelve years later, in New York City, an incapacitated Igor rebuilds his gallery with the help of his assistants. When introduced to Ray Charlotte Duncan, the former sculptor is enamored by a resemblance to his past masterpiece, Mary Antoinette. Meanwhile, Duncan's reporter roommate notes the similarities between Igor's Joan of Arc and a recently deceased model missing from the morgue. Could there be a connection? What? No! The gruesome makeup for Wax Museum and Dr. X before it were designed by Max Factor, better known for his work in cosmetics. Factor's makeup was contrasted by the film's beautifully sculpted wax figures, some of which were played by actors in order to more closely resemble their living counterparts, but also because they would melt under the hot lights required to shoot in color. Like Dr. X before it, Wax Museum shows off its pre-code storytelling by delving into suicide, pornography, bootlegging, drug addiction, and unexpected Tommy Wiseau quotes. Oh, hello. How's your sex life? Anyway, how is your sex life? Again, Wax Museum was thought lost for decades before being rediscovered in Warner's vault. 
Meanwhile, it was remade in 3D in 1953 as House of Wax, starring Vincent Price, which itself was remade as a slasher in 2005, starring Paris Hilton. Oh my god. Despite their historical importance, the unavailability of these two films over the decades has left them as little more than hidden gems. In fact, for years, the only available version of Wax Museum was a 1985 transfer released as a special feature on the House of Wax DVD. Luckily, both films have recently been restored and released on Blu-ray, so if you haven't seen them, I say give them a watch. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon for funding this video, and if you haven't yet, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.